Hey y'all, welcome back to Andy's Little Homestead. I'm Andy, and this is Juanita. Got me a new plow truck to work this winter. She's a 1978 GMC K15. So today I'm gonna show you around the truck, everything about it, and then we're gonna fix it because I, I can't afford nice things. This was only $4,000. And she's in pretty good shape for $4,000. So I reckon I'll show you around first, and one of the first things that you might notice is, uh, that's Chevy bow tie. Well, the title says GMC. I haven't checked VIN numbers and I don't really care that much. Pretty sure it got cab swapped at some point, but it's in decent shape. She got a nice rattle can paint job and a little bit of Bondo. That's fine. It's a winter truck. It's going to get destroyed. But the interior is in pretty good shape. All the gauges, all the lights. Well, most of the gauges and all the lights work. Even the original radio works. That temperature gauge doesn't work, so they got the $20 one from the parts store. It reads 230 degrees all the time. I don't think that's accurate. We, we, we probably do something about that. The door pins are bad, so you can't really be, you know, like gentle when you close it. You gotta, you gotta slam it. Came with a good Western plow on it, so I'm happy about that. From what I found, if you're gonna buy a truck and then put a plow on it, it's usually cheaper to get the truck that has the plow on it. Something about adding the plow, not adding value to the truck. At, I don't really know how it works, but the guy I bought it from just uses it to run in his yard. That's kept the frame pretty clean. All my body mounts and bushings have been replaced. And if I got to do the other body work at some point, that's fine, but I, I hate messing with body mounts, cab mounts, all that crap. Do you have a little bit of rust on that uh, leaf spring mount? When I say rust on it, I mean it's rusted through, but that's okay. We should be able to get that fixed. The tires are in great shape. Only got like 100 miles on them. They were made in Thailand, um, so... Don't know how long that'll last, but they're good for now. Y'all ain't allowed to judge. I know some of y'all are out there with $2,000 rims running some Ling Longs on them. But I think one of the coolest things about this truck is that it's entirely electric. Gotcha. Listen to that beautiful 350 cubic inch electric motor go. Man, I can almost hear the ice caps reforming. It's got a real nice ladder rack on it that I don't need. So if anybody wants to give me 500 bucks, I'll give you the ladder rack and the tour of the farm. The bed itself is actually pretty cool. Apparently the guy who owned it before the guy I bought it from worked in the oil field and this is all made out of old drill pipe. But the welds look decent. So it was put together by somebody who knew what they were doing. That's a nice change of pace. All in all, I think it'll be a good work truck. But she's not ready to go just yet. I actually had the trailer to get her here because we got a bad wheel bearing out back. So I reckon the next thing to do is get started on that. The first thing we got to do is jack the old girl up, pull this tire off. So we've got our brake drum coming off of here. So now we're going into removing the axle shaft itself. Now th there's two different, well, basically two different setups for this. You have this type, which is called a semi-floating axle. And then you have a full floater, which is more common on three quarter and one ton trucks. On a full floating axle, you're gonna have this cap right here with bolts that are holding it down. And that's actually holding the axle shaft itself. If I were to take those out, I could pull the axle shaft off without touching anything else. With a full floater setup, the bearings in the rear wheel are actually onto the, the hub itself. So the axle itself is completely independent from the weight of the truck. That's why they're able to carry more weight. In this case, back behind this hub right here, the axle shaft itself rides on a bearing and therefore the weight of the truck is on that bearing, which means if you don't address something like this pretty quickly, you can damage your axle shaft and cause more problems down the road. And with everything off, you can kind of see the amount of play that we got there which is why we're doing this now. So now we're getting into the part that maybe the guys who, you know, just do their own oil changes maybe uh, aren't all that comfortable with, but it's really, really simple. We've got to pull the differential cover off of this. This axle is commonly referred to as GM 12 bolt because they got 12 bolts going around. It's real simple stuff. We got some chocolate milk. It's not really that big of a deal. If it was completely white, I'd worry about the water to oil ratio, but uh, it's fairly common for these to get water in them. It's really not the end of the world. So we're gonna let this drain out, take a quick look over everything, wipe down the bottom, we'll go from there. So from here on, as long as this is open, the name of the game is clean. We don't wanna get any kind of dirt in here. Normally there's a little magnet down on the bottom that is there to pick up any kind of metal shavings that might have come out. It seems to be absent, but 
That's okay, all our teeth look like they're in good shape. I think we're good. So from here, we spun the differential around to uh, get to right here. We've got a small bolt, looks like it's about a half inch, I think, and then this pin. This bolt holds this pin. Once this pin goes out, that axle shaft can slide right out. I'm sorry, y'all, I completely forgot a step. There, uh, when you get that pin out, there's a C-clip that's on the end of the axle shaft right there. You pull the C-clip out and then you pull the shaft out. My bad. So here's a better view of where that C-clip goes onto the shaft. You can see how it had a little bit of rust from water inside there. And over here, you can see where the bearing rides and we wanna check this out. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's just a little bit thinner, but I think that's plenty of good shape to reuse. So we caught it when we need to. That's the whole point of doing this now is before it becomes a problem. I'm really trying to change my ways, y'all. So inside here, we've got our, our bearings, which all, you know, fell down. And then our axle seal right here. We're gonna pull both of these out with a puller. So we're gonna use our slide hammer to get that out of there. This is a cheap Harbor Freight version, and it works just fine if this is a only every now and again job. Nope, this one ain't grabbing a hole. There we go. Pull what's left of this destroyed bearing out of here. So the the race, what, what's left of that bearing is kind of tough to get out of there. We set up our three jaw puller on here. We're gonna see if that does it. I don't think we moved it. Well, I've been trying to force on it for a good 15 minutes now, so it's about time to use fire. Oh, come on, you just work. Come on. Ah, All right, well, she ain't moving. Um, so we're gonna break out the extra spicy fire and try that. All right, we just about got it. You son of a So now would be a really good time to put the new bearing in because the the axle shaft, excuse me, the axle tube is warm. So it, when it heats up, it expands. And if you have a cold bearing and a warm expanded axle, excuse me, the warmed up big hole, cold bearing, little bearing, it'd be easy to tap in. But I just tried to dry fit it and I got the wrong size. So back to the parts store, then we'll get this thing in. All right, so we got the right one now. And all we have to do is tap it in and then the axle seal. Now it's important to note that this is actually uh, directional. So one edge of this is more rounded than the other one. So the side that's more rounded needs to go to the outside. Got everything cleaned up inside the axle tube. Let's put it back together. Now to get this back in, we're using a uh, bearing driver set. And basically you wanna use the size that is just a, a hair smaller than the bearing itself. But this way it will provide even force on it while it's getting driven in. And there we go. It was pretty simple. The biggest thing is just make sure you're tapping it in evenly because when it gets cocked to the side, it has a possibility of warping or just bending something. Just, just go slow, make it happen. And just so you know, there's no law that says you can't use a hatchet to tap in a wheel bearing. That's common misconception. Now all we gotta do is just the reverse of what we did to take it out. We'll put a new gasket on the diff cover. We'll fill it up, see how she does. Had to pick Michigan, huh? Nothing to do now but give her a proper test run. Y'all, the old girl did great. 
I'm so dang happy with this truck. It's not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but I think it's exactly what we need. I'm sure there's something I could have done better on the install, but I don't do this every day, so here we are. It's done. She's running good. I'm happy. I did want to mention they do make, uh, I think they call them repair bearings. It's actually the bearing and the axle seal all in one self-contained type unit, kind of like a modern hub assembly. Maybe could have used that on this. I don't really know. But y'all, I'm happy to be back running a square body. I've got actually quite a few other things I want to do to this truck, and we'll get to that in another video. I might even tell y'all what I'm doing with Stacy. Because believe it or not, I do have a plan for the old girl. As always, I hope y'all enjoyed, and I hope you learned something. I love you, and God bless. Why is she named Juanita? It's pretty obvious, isn't it? She's big. She's beautiful. She's brown. She's here to work. Y'all aren't allowed to get mad at me because a Mexican guy named Ray told me I could. So yeah, that's the name I'm going with. You don't have to like it. I don't really care.